Well, I'm delighted to be joined by test and development driver at Envision Racing, Alice Powell. Alice, we're here at Berlin Tempelhof Airport. You are here with the team, keeping an eye on things, but also taking part in the rookie test tomorrow. Before we get into that exciting <laughs> stuff, can you tell me a bit more about your role with the reigning team's champion, Envision? So mostly it is just simulator stuff. They're based at Silverstone, so it's quite handy for me. I only live about an hour away. I pop in when needed to, to go on the sim, whether it's sort of prior to event or prior to the drivers coming, as Seb and Robin coming in, or in this case weekend, Joel and, uh, and Paul. And then maybe after the race weekend as well, just to sort of check parameters and, and do a little bit of a compare for what we've picked up on track to, to the sim. So that's mainly what my, my role is. Okay, perfect. Well, for people that might be a little bit like maybe not sure about what you would actually be looking for in a simulator can you give me detail about the kind of things that you're trying to pick up on coming into say a circuit like temple home well simulators uh play a huge part in pretty much any championship whether you're down at the lower ranks at the junior formally or you're at the top to to formula formula e so Due to the nature of Formula E, you don't get much track time, so the simulators are really, really important. Uh, the practice sessions are only 30 minutes long, you only get two of them, and then you're straight into, into qualifying. So what we do is we have a, a laser scan of, of the track that, that gets sent to, I'm guessing it's most of the teams, unless they make their own, but I very much doubt it. And then we would just check to make sure that the track's all right, there's not some you know magic bumps that have uh, appeared in, in, in the track scan and we just do sort of run energy saving runs, we do some 300 push runs, we do 350 runs, just to make sure, especially for me prior to the drivers coming in, we do that to just make sure that, that everything runs, runs good for the drivers then to hop in. Lovely, well talking of drivers, this weekend in Germany, it's a bit of an unusual situation for the Envision team because you've got two new familiar faces and some new faces in that team with Joel Eriksson and Paul Aaron. Have you been giving them much advice, any tips, especially for somebody like Paul, because he only had Masano free practice before he was chucked into to the car this weekend? Nah, those guys, they don't need, they don't need advice. Um, especially from me, they've doing so good in, in what they've been driving, especially Paul, he's currently racing in Formula 2. They've spent a lot of time on the simulator. Um, Certainly the past few weeks, a lot more time that, than I have. We've, we've just dedicated the, the time to, to them. They've had Seb and Robin, who of course are the usual drivers. They've been there giving, giving their advice and passing on sort of wisdom about energy saving, uh, parts of the track, even though the track's changed from when Seb and Robin were last here. So no, I, I've, I've kind of just stayed away, let them get on with it. Um, but I think they're doing a great job this weekend. Yeah, well, you're taking part in the rookie test tomorrow. Although you're not really a Formula E rookie, you had your first taste of Formula E machinery back in 2020, season yeah. six. What are you thinking about the evolution of Formula E from Gen 2 to Gen 3? Like, will this be your first time in a Gen 3 car? So I've shaken it down, but that wasn't going around a track. So uh, <laughs> this will be the first time taking it on, on a track. It's actually been nearly two years since I've stepped foot in, in a car. So. Uh, it's all, it probably won't feel strange. Some people say it's like riding a bike, but I think there's definitely going to be some cobwebs, etc., to, to blow off. But yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to hopping back in, um, comparing the two cars. Obviously, I think the evolution of Formula e is, is incredible. The development, you think from season one or the first few seasons where they had to come in and change car to, to now, that's what the space of 10 years or so. And that development in technology doesn't usually take that quick, but it develops so quickly in, in Formula E. And obviously, Gen 3 compared to Gen 2, it's more powerful, it's, it's faster, it's, it's what you want to see going around a racetrack, fast cars. So, um, yeah, the, what Formula E are doing it, it, with the development of that is, is fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. And is there anything in particular about this Gen 3 that you're really excited to sort of try and feel, have a feel for? Just, I think my main purpose, I know I'm not going to be setting the world on fire. You know, they, we've, I'm up against uh, some drivers that are racing in F2, F3, are constantly out. That's true. I'm here to try and get as much sim correlation as I can, you know, um, get used to the car. We have got quite a few test things to, to go through um, just for, for the team and, and some stuff that will have helped the boys for, for the rest of the season. So it's, it's more of sort of me getting used to the car so I can then relate that to, to the sim and then also work on those test items as well. Well, I also love seeing you here, of course, anyway, but taking part in the rookie test, it's amazing to get some representation for women in Formula E. 
we've obviously got yourself, we've got Marta Garcia down at ERT, but how important is it to showcase your talents to maybe people watching at home as well as we've got initiatives like the FIA Girls on Track as well? For example, using Girls on Track is, is showing girls that, you know, there is representation, uh, there are plenty of opportunities, it's not just about the drivers. Even though drivers think it's just about the drivers, it's clearly about the teams as well. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, uh, not just here at the track, but back at, at base as well, wherever a team may be based. There's a lot that goes on, so there's a lot of other opportunities in the sport, um, whether it be a driver, engineer, mechanic, you've got you know, the, the team crew here that organise the travel, the hospitality, PR, comms, you've got so many different opportunities and I think it's just making um, you know, young girls that are coming up through, whether it's primary school or whether it's secondary school age, that there is plenty of other things, there are plenty of other things that, that take place. Uh, it's not just all about sort of the drivers and the mechanics. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Alice, and best of luck tomorrow. No worries, thank you.